Hey everyone, this is Metalhead Nation 1021, and today I want to talk to you guys about the two concerts that I've gone to this year, uh, both of them in the past two months. Uh, first, I saw Sons of Apollo with Felix Martin and Sifting in DC at the Howard's Theater. Then on June 10th, I saw Testament, Anthrax, Behemoth, Lamb of God, and Slayer on Slayer's Farewell Tour. And uh, I'm going to start with the Sons of Apollo concert. Uh, Sifting, a progressive metal band, uh, kind of in the lines of... Uh, it's hard to compare them. They have a more radio-friendly sound than most prog bands. Songs aren't as long. But it sounded awesome. They were great. They had they seemed to have the shortest set, but I mean they were awesome. Uh I really did like the uh the drums in that band in Sifting. It was awesome. And the vocalist had a great uh stage uh, I'm trying to think of the word it a great stage presence. And he was kinda of interacting with the crowd and it was awesome. I really enjoyed their set. And in the end, they threw a lot of picks into the crowd, and one of them landed down in this one area between the guardrail and the, uh, between the stage and the guardrail in, like, that little area between the two. And I was trying to get one of the picks, and this guy, probably in his 30s, 40s, 50s, somewhere around there, reached under, got the pick, and handed it to me. It was awesome. Great guy, and I got to talk to a lot of awesome people there. Everybody was great. It was nice. It was awesome. Uh, then Felix Martin uh, was like a... They are from South America, if I'm not mistaken. And they had like the style where they had like a, a 14, 15 string guitar. Uh, it was a, just a ton of tapping and stuff. Really technical. It was awesome. Again... The guitars and drums were awesome. It was really unique. I've never seen, and I probably will never see anything like it again. It's just, unless I see them again. It was so, it was just really odd, and it was awesome, though. Really unique concept, and it'd be cool to see more bands try to do what they do. And it was awesome. And then finally, uh, Sons of Apollo played, I'm thinking, a two-hour set. They covered a few Dream Theater songs, actually, which was pretty cool. And they also uh, invited a kid up onto the stage at one point. Uh, I'm guessing he was like 10 years old or something. And that was awesome. Uh, Mike Portnoy is my favorite drummer, so it was awesome seeing him. Again, it's the second time. First time being with the Winery Dogs back in 2014 or 15 at the M3 Festival. And it was just so awesome to see that band. I had their album, and I got... Uh, a shirt and a signed CD, which I showed in my last video. Super cool. I'll definitely go see them again. Uh, it was the last date of their North American tour. So, yeah, it was probably one of the most energetic shows. Like, it was so cool. And we probably stood up for like six hours straight, five hours, six hours straight. And I didn't, I was so excited. I didn't feel a thing. Like, just standing up there, my legs, like, I could have stood up there for another five hours watching them. It was crazy. They were great, and uh, I'd never seen any of the three bands before, so it was a nice experience, like, getting to, like, see these bands. And I didn't even know about the open, the two opening bands at first until I heard about the concert. So being able to, like, find these bands and then look into their discography is really cool and it was awesome and I think one of my favorite parts was having like a, like a lot of people around me it was really un like it was a small crowd like really small because it was a, a Sunday night I think and there is I think they said there was a, a Warriors game on so there had to be less than 50 people in there maybe at maybe about 50 maybe a little bit more but it was awesome I was like front row second row to the stage, it was great, and the the musicianship again, like their stage presence, especially Sons of Apollo, their stage presence is amazing. Like, it's a super group, 
in every definition of that word. It, it was amazing. And I definitely recommend checking them out uh, next time they tour, if they're not touring already right now. They were awesome, worth it. I'd say 9.5 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. That was a great concert. Uh, that was a great one, but I didn't know I was going to go to that one until a few days before. On the other hand, I've known since like February, or I can't remember when, probably February or March, that I was going to be going to the Slayer concert. So I was really anticipating going to there, really excited. It was a shorter drive. It was like 45 minutes. It was awesome. Like the trip, because usually we have to drive an hour and a half, three hours sometimes to get to a concert. So it was a short drive, awesome. Parking was a difficulty because it was at Jiffy Lube Live, which is a decent sized venue. And especially getting out of the parking lot at the end of the show was, it was rough. But we walked in, Testament had either just started their set or just been go it or had been going on. Uh, we caught, I think we caught the majority of Testament set because they were the opening band. They were awesome. Uh, Gene Hoagland is one of my favorite drummers, so it was awesome be finally being able to see him. And we sat pretty far away, so for the first few bands, it was kind of hard to see. But uh, when it got darker later at the night, uh, during the Lamb of God set, in Slayer set, the screen, you get like the, the, the screens, they had two screens, one on each side. Uh, they lit up and you could actually like see what was going on on stage. And that was really cool. Uh, I got a lot of video of that and I was thinking about posting it, but there's enough of it already. I don't need to flood like any more than I have to. Uh, but yeah, back to the uh, Testament set. It was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Then I think they had, uh, Behemoth was up next, and sorry if I butcher any of the names, but I think it was Nurgle who is, I'm probably, I probably mispronounced that so bad, but he's the singer and guitar player, I think, guitar or bass, and his birthday's on June 10th, so if I'm not mistaken, it was kind of hard to see, it looked like the Slayer guys, or at least Carrie King, uh, came out and gave him a cake or something. I can't remember what it was. It was awesome. We all sang happy birthday and it was really cool. The whole crowd was joining in. Everybody was cheering. That was awesome. As for their set, it was incredible. Awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, John Rice is on drums when they tour in America. I'm not sure. But whoever was behind the, the drum kit, they were awesome. Uh... Then the next band to play was Anthrax, and I never really got into Anthrax. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, I liked a few of their songs and stuff, but I never really got into them as much as some of the other bands on the, the on the set, uh, or on the card or whatever. But their performance was awesome. Charlie Benante, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. He kicked, he was awesome on drums. It was awesome. The drum fills. Strong performance, it was awesome. Uh, the guitars were crazy, the vocals were awesome. The backdrop that they had was really cool. And they surprised me. I, I kind of got a little more interested in the band now that I've seen them live, and it was a great experience. Uh, so yeah, those are the first three bands, and then the ones, I like, started to get dark, so the screens went up, and the longer set, the first long set, was Lamb of God, and they were awesome. They were absolutely amazing. They're from Virginia, so they were talking about uh, how it was awesome to be back, and it was really cool. Everybody was really excited for them. They probably they got a lot of uh, they had a lot of clapping and yelling. It was awesome. They uh, they had one of the best stage presence pre uh, stage presences on uh, or at least on that night. Like, Randy Blythe was jumping around everywhere. It was crazy. I mean, he, you could tell there was an energy on stage, as well as an energy in the crowd. Uh, the venue uh, had a pit, so a lot of people. That's when it really started to open up uh, during their set, during the Lamb of God set. And it was awesome to uh, see a band from Virginia that has gotten so successful 
still appreciate like their home state and where they came from. And they're one of the bands on the set that if I could see again, I'd definitely take the opportunity, maybe at a smaller venue, because they were awesome. They they were one of my favorites. And it was just such an atmosphere. Like they involved the crowd a lot. And it was great. I really enjoyed their set. So then the final set of the concert was Slayers, obviously. It's their farewell tour. So uh, they opened up with Repentless, if I'm not mistaken. So that was awesome. Uh, they had three backdrops throughout the night. Uh, one of them was like the Repentless album cover. And they played a few songs. I remember they played Repentless, Payback, which is one of my favorite songs. And I, I think it's one of the most underrated Slayer songs. So when they played that, I was really excited. Uh, Seasons in the Abyss, and I'm pretty sure they played South of Heaven. I'm not sure, uh, but that was, it was really cool. Their set was awesome. So they had like the, uh, for the backdrop, the back uh, flag, I guess you'd call it. They had the Repentless album cover. They had like this uh, bloody skull kind of thing for the second one, and it looked awesome. And another note, those two lit up in the dark. So when like the when the stage would go dark, you'd just see like the lighting of the Slayer logo and like the design on it. It was awesome. It looked awesome. And on stage, they had like inverted crosses made of fire. Uh, they had cool pyrotechnics in the back. They had like two like Slayer logos with like the pentagrams and stuff. And fire would come up behind them sometimes. It was really cool. And uh, then. It, it was really cool. I really enjoyed their set as well. Uh, it was awesome. And then, at the end, they played Angel of Death. And right when, it's like around the 22nd mark when Tom Araya does the scream, they drop the second uh, back flag or whatever you want to call it. And they had like the Jeff Hanneman uh, Angel of Death memorial kind of flag and it was just so cool to see that up there for the song and they ended on angel of death and it definitely ended on a high note it was awesome and it's sad to see such a a big legend of metal uh finally put uh put down uh the band and move on to different things but uh they lasted 37 years and it's definitely awesome to see them have lasted that long and them gain the popularity for what kind of music they're playing. So that concert, again, that was an awesome concert. 9.5 or 10 out of 10, it, it was awesome. And uh, if they haven't stopped by your area yet, if they're stopping by eventually, you need to go. It was awesome, it was one of the best concert experiences I've had. Uh, somebody recognized the shirt I was wearing. Uh, from an underground Richmond band called Psychotic Defilement. That was cool. A uh, friend from school I actually saw him there. That was awesome. Him and I talked for a bit. And it was really enjoyable. It was a great experience. It's the biggest concert I've gone to so far. And I definitely recommend it. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. It was just an awesome experience. And to catch Slayer before they uh, retire, it's an opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So. Check it out. It's awesome. Check out both the concerts. Check out all the bands. It was awesome. Thank you for watching. This is Metalhead Nation 1021, and I'll see you in the next video.